that was like my signal to be like, okay, I've got to get the hell out of here. But you still hang on to all of that negative energy that took place so significantly. I mean, I couldn't remember a day where like I didn't feel like I wasn't worth it because I had so much time where I was being beaten down with those words. Like, you know, there's no, there's no physical abuse. Nobody hit me, nobody, you know, I didn't break any bones, but like mental bones shattered. Welcome to Beyond the Scale, the show where everyday heroes share their stories on how they turn their lives around for the healthier. I'm Coach Brittany, and today's guest is Stephen Briscoe. He talks about the importance of self-development and how that led him to pursue his passion for fitness. Hope you enjoy. All right, welcome Stephen Briscoe. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me, Brittany. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for being here with us today. No problem. I mean, I was in the area. I figured why not, right? right? Might, yeah. might as well. Well, we appreciate it. So, Absolutely. Can you start off by telling us a little bit about what you currently do? Absolutely. I am a Fit Body Bootcamp owner um, out in Farmingdale on Long mm -hmm. Island in New York. It's real specific. Um, I help people uh, improve their lives every single day, get a little bit healthier, introduce them to the lifestyle that is health and fitness. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for changing lives out there. Absolutely. We, need, we you know, need more people like you out there. You know what? I've been telling my members that every single day, and they... Uh, they like to think that, you know, I just say it, but I, I really truly believe that there could be more of me. It would be a drastic improvement to the rest of the world. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very humble. <laughs> so, so tell me, how did you originally get into fitness? Um, oh, geez, that's way, way back in the day. Um, I was always a very, very scrawny kid. Um, I was the skinny kid. Like, people would, you know, I know everybody's like, oh, good for you. Like, you, you're the skinny guy, right? You struggle to, to gain weight, things like that. Yeah, I do. I know the struggles. It's just in the opposite direction. Um, I first went to the gym um, because uh, one of my best friends who's no longer with us, his name's Rob Riley, he's a sweetheart. Um, he, uh, you know, basically, it was like, was this before Jersey Shore? I don't remember. All I know is that, <laughs> like, we just wanted to be good-looking dudes. And so uh, he brought me to the gym one day with him because he had been working out in his garage and he started going to a gym. I went with him and um, my brother was there as well. And I just remember, like, I, I was unable that day to do a kickback with a five-pound dumbbell. Like, mm. my arms were that thin. Could not move a five-pound <laughs> dumbbell. It was horrible. Um, I was mortified. They laughed at me. It was the worst. I never wanted to go back. And I was like, you know what? Um, I'm not the type of person that kind of takes that stuff laying down. And mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, like, if there's somewhere you want to be, obviously you have to push through that beginning point in, in order to improve. So I went back. Um, I remember the day I did my first dip like it was yesterday. It was the most exciting, most fulfilling experience of my entire life above everything I've ever done. <laughs> um, just that sense of pride when I locked out those elbows and I was like, yeah, that's right. Couldn't do a second one, but like that first one <laughs> hey, at felt least you pretty got the good. First one done, exactly. Right? And um, just from there, like ever since that, that moment of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, of success, mm -hmm. like I was hooked. I could never, like, I could never not be in the gym, like, and I also fell in love with dips, and eventually I had, like, two plates around me, and I was dipping nice. out, and, like, it was, um, those were good times, but uh, I, I absolutely fell in love with it. I wanted to, um, it, like, I tried to drag everybody to the gym with me. I wanted friends to come with me. I wanted my brother to come with me. I, I took my dad to the gym one day. He came one day. He never went back with me because <laughs> I killed him, um, but it was, it, like, that was it for me. From that point, I, I knew it was going to be a very, very big part of my life for the rest of my life. So you mentioned you had insecurities in regards to being the skinny kid. What other insecurities did you face early on? Um, early on going to the gym? Just, I mean, in your young adult life. In my young adult life. Um, uh, everybody has tons of, tons of insecurities, right. tons of uh, environmental factors that kind of develop and shape their psyche. I feel like the vast majority of people don't figure out, uh, or what is it? Uh, I think Josh Carter said a great uh, the other day where the first 20 years of our lives is us just being absolutely torn apart by um, everything in our lives, whether it's friends, whether it's family. And then the next 20 years of that is reconciling and figuring out who you are based on those experiences. And then once you hit 40, it's like, okay, I've got my stuff together. Like now it's time to live my life. And so that the first 20 years of my life, I definitely wholeheartedly agree that it is a brutal experience of uh, people telling you that you can't do things, making mm -hmm. fun of you, kids are horrible growing up, things like that. 
and then you wind up getting into the ages where you start developing relationships and girls and all those, all the fun and security that comes with that. Mm -hmm. um, you get your first heartbreaks and there's you know parents and stuff that you have to impress and you've just got, um, I know for me personally, there was a whole series of, it was probably several years of just like trying to impress this girl's family and just years of verbal abuse of like, you know, you're not gonna amount to anything, like this kid's a loser, like all of this stuff. And it, you hear it enough, you start to believe it, it sinks in and you just hit that like dark spot that you, you struggle to get out of. And then, you know, there's just days where you have to pick yourself back up. You, uh, was my mom says it all the time. She's gonna be really excited. Hi, mom. She's gonna be <laughs> real excited that I say this, but um, uh, it's a saying of hers that like uh, we all walk around with knives in our backs, but nobody knows, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, eventually, it you've gotta pick yourself up, pull those knives out, and let those wounds heal. Just going back to like one of the biggest insecurity struggles that I ever I ever hit in was like. Uh, when I was like 20, I disappeared to Ohio, like left my family, my friends, everything behind. I went out to Ohio chasing this girl, um, helped her open a fit body boot camp, which is why I fell in love with it to begin mm -hmm. with, because I had a passion for fitness, I had a passion for being healthy, and when I got exposed to that positive environment, and like the, the family atmosphere, just seeing all of these people experience that first dip the way that I did, right. I've, I, right. like, I've, I knew that that was for me, like that's where I wanted to be. And so I was very passionate about it. They didn't pay me a dime. I just did it because I, lo I loved the girl. I loved what I was doing, like that was it. And um, eventually, you know, with that verbal abuse that took place, even though I was working really hard and I felt like I was doing great and I was developing, um, that, that I guess they just expected so much more, mm -hmm. you know, um, that it wound up uh, that verbal abuse going in day in day out from me from her it just wound up adding up to the point where she started to believe it i started to believe it i didn't think i was any good my work ethic started to decline she wound up going and doing her own thing um with some other guy while i was there which was yeah. weird uh but um that was like my signal to be like okay i've got to get the hell out of here but you still hang on to all of that negative energy that took place so significantly i mean i couldn't remember a day where like i didn't feel like i wasn't worth it because i had so much time where i was being beaten down with those words like you know there's no there's no physical abuse nobody hit me nobody you know i didn't break any bones but like mental bones shattered and uh, i feel like people don't like sometimes people don't realize how much the mental abuse can affect you i mean absolutely i mean even with my clients like 90 percent of getting somebody healthy is not you know oh stop drinking soda it's finding out why they turn to soda exactly. why that is the their go-to um vice you mm -hmm. know um people talk like not to get too political or something but i was talking to my uber driver the other day <laughs> about um uh you know because i'm in california obviously marijuana is illegal in New York, but mm -hmm. I asked him, I was like, what are your thoughts on it? And, you know, um, it basically comes down to the things in our lives tend to be a little addictive, you know? People can get addicted to alcohol. People can get addicted to well, mentally, not physically. I don't know. I don't want to draw that debate. But, you know, people get addicted to habits, right? right. Food is also a habit. And so when people are hurting, when there's things in their lives that you may not be able to see that are going on deeply internally, whether it's at their home, whether it's at their job, whether it's just inside themselves telling themselves lies and things like that, they need to overcome that first before they can implement a healthier lifestyle. I don't know if I made sense, but I no, feel like did. I did. No, you did. You made perfect sense. Okay. So talking about the verbal abuse that you went through, how did that affect your health and fitness? Um, did it affect it at all? Oh, absolutely. Um, I am a, uh, I apologize to everybody out there. I am what's called a hard gainer, which means that when I, um, when I struggle, when I eat worse foods, when I'm not paying attention to my nutrition, I don't get fat, I waste away. So like I was like, skeletal mm. at certain points where like to me somebody who kind of you know identifies themselves as a fitness professional as somebody who's fit and healthy to look at myself in the mirror and see you know like ribs and bones and like it's not good i wasn't like i don't want to say that i was like anorexia skin thin that's not what i'm trying to say but um i was definitely probably 20 pounds lighter than i am right now okay. it's a big deal yeah um because yeah. i'm not that heavy <laughs> but um it's uh I, I understand and I connect with when people look at themselves in the mirror and they see something that they don't like and it is straight up a reflection of how I felt at that time. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel worth it. I didn't feel 
um, I, uh, proud of who I was. I didn't feel like I was on the right path because of that, and my body reflected it. So um, that's typically what I tend to see with people's health and fitness, just in my clients as well, is that your body tends to reflect the the level of life that you're living. If you are, uh, if you're motivated, if you're happy with where you're at, if you are comfortable with the friends that you have and the life that you're living, and you know there's there's less stress, you your body reflects that happiness. And if you are unhappy with where you're at mentally, emotionally, something like that, then, I mean, your your body is a product of the life that you live. So. Absolutely. I mean, your mind is such a powerful tool that can either do good or bad for you. It's all in the Absolutely. way that you frame things and, you know, train your thoughts. Yeah. So what was the turning point for you? Um, the turning point was definitely the whole, hey, there's another guy in the picture. Um, okay. Or actually, I shouldn't say that. That was when I left there. Um, the turning point for me was, uh, it was probably almost, I, it had to be close to like two years afterwards. That's how okay. long like I was just like off the radar. Um, and I just like woke up one day because... <laughs> A lot of people turn to like drugs and alcohol when they're depressed. I'm like the guy who like holds himself up in a room, doesn't talk to people. I was playing like video games and like, okay, yeah. But um, I I like got up one day and I was just like, this is not who you are. My my friend who originally introduced me to the mm -hmm. gym, he had um, he got hit by a train unfortunately, oh, which is like uh, just the craziest thing ever. But um, I lost him and I was you know going through a lot of internal you know, reconciliation and figuring out who I was and stuff like that. And I just realized that's not, this is not the way that I want to live my life. Like I was so much happier before. Um, I, you know, I'm living in my parents' house. Like I've got to get my stuff together. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be 26 this year. Like it was unsustainable to live. And I, you know, um, I love that Bedros has his book, Man Up Plug, Man Up <laughs> coming out very, very soon because I had a very similar revelation, not to the extent that he had, but just, uh, you know what? you got to get over this. Like these people are going on with their lives, living them out. Like they don't think about you. Like you moping around isn't changing anything. Man up, woman up, human up, whatever you want to do. Get your stuff together <laughs> mm -hmm. and go out and do what you loved at that time. And I remembered that Fit Body Boot Camp was where I got that click, that switch that was, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I called up every single person that I knew that day. Um, asking, hey, do you have a job? Hey, do you know anybody? Because I was unemployed for like two years. Like, yeah, it was oh, bad. Okay, okay. Um, so uh, I wasn't doing anything. Um, I called up everybody I knew. I got this gig in the city. Um, and I wa worked for something like two to three years, like 60 plus 70 hour work weeks, like day in and day out, like coming home. At, sometimes I wouldn't even go home. I would like pull into the shop parking lot at like 3 a.m., knock out for an hour, and then go back to work, drive back into the city the next day because like I was just I was just on the grind. Like I had audiobooks in, like I was just back. Like I felt better. I started to gain weight. I was eating more. Like my body started to change around me, starting to improve. And then after that two years, uh, my brother came up to me and he was like, hey, like what's this thing you're working so hard for? Like why are you beating yourself into the ground with this job? Like right. it sucks. What are you doing? I told him about it. Um, he was like, he realized what my reason behind it was. He was excited about it. He says, you know, I'll meet you halfway. I probably would have been there right now if it wasn't for him. And um, he met me halfway, you know, we just came out to university. We signed like a lease like a couple months later. And here we are almost a year into being open with, you know, 300 members. And it's just, it's been a wild ride. It happened very quickly, but um, it's just that, that mindset switch that yes. gets flipped, that gets you fired up and motivated. And as long as you stoke those flames and you feed the beast, like you, you'll get to wherever you want to be. It's crazy. Now you mentioned audiobooks earlier. Mm -hmm. How important do you think it is to continuously either read or listen to audiobooks to work on your mindset? It is pivotal. Um, every single person that I look up to that I know that is light years ahead of me as far as business or personal development or anything like that is concerned. One of the big key things I've noticed that they have on me is like the amount of books that they read or listen to. You know, if they're cranking out like two, three books a month, whereas like I'm struggling to get one done like every two months. Um, but uh, it's, I mean, in, it's just like school, right? right. In, order to, in order to improve, you need to learn in order to learn and implement, you need to practice. And it's like personal development books, like improving your mindset and how you think 
is something that you can fall out of practice with. If yes, you're not absolutely. constantly working on yourself and trying to improve, you know, it's, um, I, uh, again, Josh Carter, he's a genius. Um, <laughs> he was saying earlier today that um, the old habits that we have, you know, dis disappearing into a room for several years and not talking to people, like that is, uh, those habits are like rivers and they kind of cut themselves into your psyche. You can re path that river and let it cut a new channel and let that channel get deeper so it's harder to get out of, but that channel is always there. And if you're not constantly feeding the beast, constantly developing, there's always the chance that the river shifts courses and heads back down that ugly path. So you need to constantly, constantly improve, constantly get better. I mean, oh, what's it called? I was watching something from Joe Rogan the other day, just to really drive the point home, <laughs> where he says that there's one thing in nature um, that is a constant, and that is conflict, resolution, and constant improvement. You'll see it anywhere um, in nature, anywhere in life. There will be conflict, it will get resolved, and there will be some form of improvement that takes place. And if you are not improving, then you're not living. I love the way you put that right now. Thank it's, you, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that and the whole, the rivers feeding that's, the beast that's and That's not that. me, that's Josh. But still, thank, thank you, you. For, for bringing it up and I appreciate mentioning it. Of course. So how has owning a Fit Body Boot Camp changed your life? Um, owning a Fit Body Boot Camp has changed my lives in more ways than uh, I could count. Um, my personal favorites, um, because I'm still not out of that phase where I get adequate sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'll ever be out of that phase because there's not enough hours in the day for me to do all the things that I want with adequate sleep. So, um, but it has transformed my life in the sense that um, I wake up every day with a drive, with a purpose, with a reason for being. I know that what I do is very, very important, and there are people that rely on me to bring that positive energy that that um, that fire because I am that for a lot of people that triggering point that helps them get healthy that mm -hmm. that tip that they decided to go to the gym that day that tip that brings them back to going to the gym and I know that um, without me providing that I'm letting down too many people and I honestly you know some people might find like anxiety or something with that kind of responsibility but I don't I, I, it's incredibly fulfilling it's it's the best, it's the, like I said, when I first, when they first opened their doors out in Ohio, um, I knew that this was for me and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So you're that for all of your clients and your members. Who's that for you? Who's that for me? Um, it's everybody that's above me. Um, it's, it's the Matt Wilbers, it's the Josh Carters, it's the Dustin Bogles, it's the Bedros Coolians, it's the Drew Mannings, it's um, everybody who has taken that impact and that drive and that inspiration towards the people beneath them and just dialed it up to 11, where it's not just that local community that they have they may have started impacting, mm -hmm. but they started impacting the lives of people who impact the lives of people right. and have just spidered out into yes. this massive um, uh, like infection of impact, which I love. Um, yeah, so, you know, everything that I do is to continue getting to that point because if I love what I do this much, I can only imagine how much I'll love what I'm doing when I can impact the amount of people that they can. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now, what type of culture do you try to build within your Fit Body Bootcamp location? Um, results, relationships, and community is probably what I would boil it down to okay. in about three words. A lot of people are intimidated when they go to the gym. You go mm -hmm. to any big box gym and they are, uh, you know, like, I have a gym that I work out to when I'm not working out at my facility. And when I walk in, somebody at the front desk who greets you, which I can only imagine if it's your first, like, working out is an emotional decision. It's yeah. something where, like, you woke up one day and you're like, I need a change. And so you go and then to immediately be met with a roadblock or an unfriendly environment or, you know, to be overwhelmed with all of this equipment and not knowing what direction to go in or who to ask for help or am I in that guy's way or that thing's covered in sweat or it's just like, it's a very intimidating, unfriendly environment. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Even if you go and you Google, you know, workouts and exercises, am I doing them right? Why is this hurting my lower back? Like, and there's so much confusion, which is why there are careers in that field, just like, you know, you could wake up one day and decide to do your taxes, but you're not an accountant. So right. <laughs> um, you may not do things properly and you may wind up hurting yourself more. Um, uh, doctors come for you when you work out improperly. The IRS comes after you when you do your taxes <laughs> wrong. So um, it's, uh, it's that similar balance. And we try to make um, fitness 
uh, I don't want to say easy because it's always going to be a challenge, but we try to make it fun, we try to make it welcoming, we try to make it as unintimidating as possible because we understand all of those problems that somebody goes through the first time they go to the gym. You have to have a very special fire to go to the gym get absolutely annihilated through a workout or be very, very confused and overwhelmed and then take that and say, no, I'm going to make this a thing. Most people, they say, they hit that wall and they say, well, I guess it wasn't for me. I'm stuck. Right. And um, we want to be that helping hand that picks people up, says, no, you can do it. You are able to accomplish this and we will help you every step of the way getting there. So in way more words than three, that's what we do. Okay. <laughs> no, I love that though. I think accountability is such an important piece when it comes to just life in general, no Absolutely. matter what you're trying to work on. What type of advice would you give someone that may be at home and they don't know where to start with losing weight? Um, if you don't know where to start, it, it doesn't really matter. It's making that conscious effort to begin that's going to help you get there. I tell my members, it's not the big steps, it's not the pounds dropped, it's not the pants sizes down that you wanna celebrate. It's every single baby step in that direction because when you take big steps, you can take a big step in the wrong direction. You take little steps, you'll only wind up taking a little step in the wrong direction if you're going the wrong way. So um, if you're thinking about getting healthier, start with you know, maybe just trying to eat a little bit healthier. Start with figuring maybe drinking one less can of soda a day, maybe getting one more water bottle in. Um, and that will help you wind up developing the path to being fit and healthy. A, a, another thing that I've been telling a lot of my members recently, just because I've been going through my own visualization trainings and stuff like that, is to picture the type of person that you want to be, the level of health that you want to achieve. Like sit down, picture that person, what do they look like? But not just the physical, how do they live that life? Mm. What does their breakfast look like? What time in the morning do they wake up? Uh, what do they do right when they wake up? What, are the, what does their workout look like? How hard do they work? How many times a, uh, a week do they go to the gym? Then pick a couple of those things and start implementing them into your life because the only difference between you and that person is the habits that you have. If you can take some of fit you's habits and put them in today, then you become that little baby step closer to being that version of you. I love the way that you said baby steps because I think a lot of people when they want to start, they want to take that big step and you're so right. You could be taking the wrong or the big step in the wrong direction where if you take those little steps, you slowly implement one, you're likely going to live a more balanced life. Absolutely. And two, you have more time to course correct if yeah. you are wrong. So. Yeah. And a lot of people wind up overwhelming themselves when they yes. take those big steps where, you know, one of the first things when a client sits down with me is what's my meal plan? What am I having for breakfast? What time do I eat it? What snack? Like, can I have this? Can I have that? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Back it up. That's a big, big light switch change. We don't take somebody who goes to McDonald's seven days a week and then send them to Whole Foods with an eight meal a day, all organic meal plan and recipe book. Like we're going to say, okay, go to seven days a week. How about on that seventh day, instead of getting the double, the two Big Macs, we go for a salad and a Big Mac. Little tiny baby yeah. steps in the wrong direction or in the right direction rather. <laughs> um, but if it's in the wrong direction, at least it's a little tiny step in the right direction because it's not a light switch. Mm -hmm. It's not a light switch. You can do diets that are light switches, but you know, do it for three months and then tell me where you're at in three months and I imagine you're back at square one. Yeah, it's just not sustainable. Absolutely not sustainable. It is, and again, it's not the habits that you're forming, it's where your head's at. That's where everybody always needs to come back. They always wanna know, you know, um, what should my workout look like? How should I be eating? It's like, back up, first figure out, you know, why you wanna do this. Um, where is your, where is your, is your head? Um, what is, what is that trigger point that made you decide to start working out? Focus on that, focus on where you wanna be and that's gonna give you the motivation to make and stick with those little habits and replace those unhealthy habits. So how does your past inspire you to really serve your clients? Again, it comes back to that, um, that willingness, that, that desire to share that excitement of improvement mm -hmm. and not just that excitement of improvement from going to perform my first dip, but turning every single one of those little baby steps into that same feeling of fulfillment mm -hmm. because that is what's going to inspire people to continue on. Um, that sparked that excitement when somebody pulls off their first push up or they weren't able to do a sit up and they get that in or they've literally never been to the gym before and this is their fourth time this week that they've come in. Like those are the things that I try to celebrate very hard and I love to celebrate because that's, that's what got me into it. That's, that's that excitement and that passion that I have that I love to see in other people's eyes and share with them. So every opportunity I have to do that is by far the best. Now, I imagine that you, you know, see a lot of, ton of results physically with your clients. Do you ever hear about stories from them how 
your fitness program has changed their outside life? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, the family page is where I call it Disney World because where all the magic happens. <laughs> um, they'll post, uh, aside from before and afters and things like that, they'll post things along the lines of um, how they've they've they're doing things that they've never done before. You know, somebody who was was very inactive, like will literally post a video of themselves playing outside with their kids, and that's something that's really impactful. Seems like nothing, but is really impactful because they'll have this big post underneath it that's like, you don't understand. I was outside playing uh, wiffle ball with my nephew for like three hours. Like he would mention it to me, and I would get winded before I started coming here. So it's those little life improvements that wind up absolutely um, um, that kind of floor you in the sense that it seems like something that you know like going for a run or something like is something you don't typically value as much because you experience it every single day and when somebody who has been struggling or like you know something as simple as like guys I went up up and down the stairs three times today I wasn't winded at all like that's a big deal like yeah. and that's something that a lot of people do every day and you take for granted and for somebody to have that that sense of dip accomplishment just going up a flight of stairs like that's that's massive and um, you know aside from that just mindset things of you know um, my favorite thing, I always know when a member's really, really starting to get comfortable when their Facebook profile picture changes. Ooh, That's my favorite, where go. like all of a sudden they're feeling good, they change that picture, they're like, their their head's on, on right, they're seeing results, they're starting to improve. And again, it's not so much as, you know, hey, they're looking good and they're showing it with the world. It's that level of confidence that comes yeah. along with it that you can see that their body's starting to reflect their mindset. They started coming in because they were confident with their ability to achieve wherever they wanted to go. And now they're sharing it because they're starting to get to where they want to be, which is really, really cool. So you kind of talked about this throughout the whole time here, but summarizing it, what does living beyond the scale mean to you? Living beyond the scale is... Um, People look at the results that they see. Um, it's always, you know, you got to break the mindset of I haven't lost five pounds because I've gained six pounds of muscle since I've been here, things like that. And a lot of people tie success that they see in their health and fitness journeys to the scale. And the thing is, the scale is not an accurate measurement of what we're trying to do. It's the easiest thing to show. It's very, very hard to show mental development, emotional development, spiritual development. You can't take a picture of that and share it with the world. Um, but you can take a picture of a number on the scale. And so it typically wins out over the others. Um, living beyond the scale is, you know, my, my most successful clients, I, I always say, they don't measure themselves because they don't. They're happy with where they're at. They're confident in who they are. They're, you know, living um, an active lifestyle. They're forging deep relationships with their friends and family. They are very, very comfortable with where they are in their lives and their bodies reflect that. So lose the scale. You don't need it. Focus on developing yourself as a person and your body will follow suit. Thank you. That was, I love the way you said all of that. It's so true. And one of these days, I swear, we're just going to have a scale breaking party. Oh my God. <laughs> I've been, I've, I've got, um, it's, it's the, it's on the horizon <laughs> at Fit Body Bootcamp in Farmingdale. Absolutely. I would love to. Well, thank you again for being on with us today and all the knowledge that you've shared. Um, for anyone out there that may be in the Farmingdale area, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me in Farmingdale um, at Farmingdale <laughs> Fit Body Boot Camp, 1815 Broad Hollow Road, your friendly neighborhood Farmingdale Fit Body Boot Camp. For those of you that may not be in the Farmingdale, New York area, make sure you visit fitbodybootcamp.com to find a location near you and claim your three free workouts. Until next time. Did you know that you could have done a full workout in the amount of time it took you to listen to this podcast? Go to fitbodybootcamp.com to claim your three free sessions now. And remember to join me next Tuesday so you can see who our special guest is. Until then, remember to live a fit body, fit mind forever.